to the top of Down Under. This week we launched the new boat on the Kimberley Coast and this is the place where Adam, my friend, has requested that we meet up and go on an epic adventure. He said fill both tanks up, Pen. That's 350 litres capacity so I'm interested to see what he's got in mind. I am here a little bit early so I'll give him a buzz and see if I can get on to him. He's coming in by road. Uh, so uh, up here in the Kimberleys, gotta meet Penzo. We've both done some trucks on land, so uh, I've got something a bit different planned. So she doesn't really know what we're doing, she's got an idea, but Hello, let's see how it goes. Yes, yeah, she is right now. Pens out, how are you, mate? Ha ah, ha you must be getting close. Yeah, mate, probably two minutes away, sorry, a little bit late. Nah, that's all good, mate. I haven't been here too long myself. Mate, you've got to get yourself here. I can see the fish in the water, they're being chased out these bait fish. All right, mate, you got that boat fueled up, you got my swag and everything, my fishing rods I sent you, I've got a plan. <laughs> yeah, mate, fuel, water, food, swags, we are set. Awesome, I'm uh, just coming across here with a salt pan, I can see the water, I think I'll be there in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Fantastic, mate, I can hear the roar of a, a cruiser coming through. Hey buddy, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you mate. You too, <laughs> We're ready to do this? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, I know your boat's got new Navionics. Yeah, it I've has. I've got it here. I've got a plan for us. What's your plan? Oh, well, it's all mapped out here. Oh wow. We're going to start here. Yep. We're going to go around there. Look at that mate, it's already connected to the boat. Fabulous. And we're going to jut in and out of all these little bays and islands here. Wow, I've seen a couple of pics of this coastline. It looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> Mate, we've done the inland trip before. You've done it, I've done it. Yeah. Sometimes we've done it a bit separately. Yeah. But, so that inland goes along here, but we're going to go on the outside. I know. And we're going to walk back in to as close as we can to bits and pieces of that Umbi track yes. that Ronnie took us along. Yeah, see how close we got. Yep. Yeah, no, that sounds amazing. But, I mean, look at these bays, yeah. look at these creeks. Absolutely beautiful. Can't wait, Matt. Let's stop talking about it and let's go do it. All right, let's grab my up here. Okay. This is it, Benzo. I know. That's all I got. <laughs> Car's gonna be safe here. Yeah, mate, it'll be fine. It's all you need. I've got everything else. Let's watch the sand on the boat, hey? <laughs> Let's go. With a weather forecast of 10 knots for the next five days, that should give us plenty of time to cover the 520 kilometres of coastline and rivers between Wyndham and Honeymoon Bay. We have supplies for 10 days and one hell of a sense of adventure. The first location Adam has picked out is a spot known as The Needles. Located on the northeastern entrance to the Cambridge Gulf, 120 kilometres north of Wyndham, this rocky outcrop juts out from the sandy coastline and doesn't see too many visitors. Here we go as we are at one of your GPS locations. What a spot. It's a cracker, isn't it, mate? <laughs> We've been through some seas. We're just around the corner from Cape Dermot. We've got the needles there behind us. Mm, beautiful. It's pretty prehistoric. And you can actually see the turtle tracks where they've been laying their eggs. Yeah, mate, did you see the one as we got off the boat? I did, they've been very busy. Yeah, they have. <laughs> this is a crack as well, great beach. I think we'd better go and explore, hey? All right, bud, let's go. <laughs>
Accessible by boat only, the needles are a sandstone formation weathered by the elements and time. A timeless witness to the harshness of the Kimberley Coast. And that harshness seems to be lurking around not too far offshore at the moment. Oh, Ken, look at that, mate. Is that what I think it is? It is. <gasps> Oh my goodness, that That's, is flaming huge. It's huge. <gasps> hey, uh, Penzo. Yeah. You gotta get the boat. Me? No, yeah. I think you have to because I would probably make more noise if something happened to you, I can yell really? further. Really? You're a little bit small and you could probably <laughs> sneak out there. I don't know, that thing is the length of me and our boat's just up there. Especially that close. Yeah, I know. And the boat, uh, tides come in, in yeah, a bit. Yeah, I know. One, two, three. You're it. You're it. <laughs> um, Mate, seriously, we need to do something. Yeah, no, jokes aside, yeah. that's not, not good. That's a, that's a big crop. Problem is now he's gone under the water. We don't know actually where he is. When he was up there further, we could actually, you know, keep an eye on him. But now our boat's just here. We haven't got too far to go, but could be anywhere around here now. So it's a waiting game. Sure is, mate. You're gonna wait till he pops up, that's for sure. <laughs> So I'm not sure who lost that. I've sent Penzo down there. She's gonna keep an eye on the croc. I've got to run out there. Now, she's got to spot him. So I'm not sure if she's bait or on the bait. So uh, I'm just gonna wait for Penzo to go down there. Hopefully she sees him and we can make a run for it. After safely making it back on board, we are pointing the boat northwest up the Kimberley coast heading towards the Berkeley River. Conditions have deteriorated from what was forecast and the wind has started to build, making for less than ideal boating conditions. With Ad skippering this leg, we have decided to pull into a bay and wait until later in the day for conditions to improve. Tell you what, this is a good spot to camp, isn't it, compared to being out there? Hey, what did we do? We did about four hours out there, <laughs> slogging it through probably two and a half metre, three metre swells. It was crazy. This is so much more pleasant. I went and sat out the back to try and, yeah, just calm my nerves a bit, but you can see the waves rolling in towards the back of the boat. Yeah, I didn't think it was a smart <laughs> idea because the waves behind us were bigger than what was in front. We were sailing down. Yeah. Mate, this is perfect. We're not too far from the Berkeley either, are we? No, we're about 10 k's away, mate, so. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but in the weather that we've had, it is quite a distance, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why we came in here. <laughs> I was done, done driving the boat. Gonna wander up there. Uh, I think it's time to look for some dinner. Yeah, You got some right. requests? Anything you bring back, I will be happy with. Well, there's a task, Let's bring back something. <laughs> All right. All right, mate, I'm gonna go do that. See you soon. See you, bud. I really love exploring these Kimberley remote bays. You just never know what you will find. I was actually looking for oysters up on these rocks, but unfortunately there's none there. But I did find this, which is absolutely incredible. It is a really good size croc tooth. And you can see this top half here where it's come out of his jaw, jaw bone, just incredible. And that's from this little tiny bay here, be about 500 meters in width. So I guess he probably calls home that little estuary system up there. So ads will have to be careful, keep an eye out. You always got to be croc wise up here. So this is a pretty cool find. I'm really happy with that. Hey, Penzo. <laughs> I see what you got. I was going to say, I did really badly with this thing. Did you? But I got you this. Oh my goodness. He is a beauty. Wow, good job. Yeah. That's great. Um, I was just pulling the boat in. It's going to come and tell you to be careful. 
because yeah. I just found this massive croc tooth. Ooh. I was going to say, watch out when you're near the water. Yeah, that belongs to a big croc, eh? Yeah, it's good size, eh? Yeah, well, I flicked him out, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's nothing up there. I'm going to grab the rod with a soft plastic. There's a great little estuary up there, so I'm going to go, go give that have, a smash. Go and have a flick with that, all right? But I'm going to stand a little bit further back now, I've seen Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might take that off your hands, yeah, cook him up for dinner. I know you don't like crab. I've got a steak out for awesome. you, mate. But, you know. You're right, crab, boat. More crab for me. Yeah, I may not look right, but yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Hi, buddy. I'm going to get my rod. <laughs> All right. Catch you. I'm actually so surprised that Ad's found this. Well, I shouldn't be because this is a remote beach and no one really fishes here. But to just have it in the water and to be able to flick it out for that, it's a game man right there. So I'm going to cook this guy up. I'm actually slightly allergic to crab, but I do have some antihistamines on board. So what's the worst that could happen? Thanks, Enzo. Oh, I've got your crap, mate. That'll do. That'll do. I was trying to get you on prey as well. As the tide tops out here, the boating conditions do seem to stabilise for a short time. So we're going to hightail it up to the Berkeley River, hoping to find a better anchorage for tonight. We've just been through two metre swell. We're between an island and a headland at the moment. It's just magnificent scenery. It's lit up right now. This is the Kimberleys at the best. Ads did an awesome job grabbing this crab for me this afternoon. That's the thing about the Kimberleys, you see an opportunity, you go for it to grab your tucker when you can. What I'm hoping to do is to actually steam this mud crab. I'm going to uh, pierce all the different parts of the crab just so the steam can circulate through the shell. There we go, so we've got some room for the steam to circulate through there. Because I'm on the boat, I don't actually have many ingredients on board. I'm trying to travel as light as possible. So what I've come up with is some soy sauce, some garlic salt, uh, some chilli sauce. And I'm going to chuck in a little bit of bourbon to give it that liquid to steam it through. So we'll start with the soy sauce first. So I'm going to put a dash of soy sauce all over these pieces of mud crab. That's done. Move on to the next is our garlic salt. When you're traveling, you just got to improvise and work with what you've got. This is one of our favorite chili sauces. It looks like it's in a tomato sauce bottle, but it's not. It's actually chili sauce. So we'll just put a dash of this over everything. And our final ingredient is some bourbon, and that will help it to steam right through. We'll put the lid on, and that should cook away for about 20, 25 minutes. It's a cool thing about having a clear lid, you can watch it cook. There we go, it's been about 30 minutes. I let it go a little bit longer because you'll see the body of this crab, he was a really good size, so he needed a little bit more cooking. And I also just added a little bit more of the bourbon as it cooked through, just so it didn't dry out. We need it to steam right the way through. Now that is a beautiful dinner right there, the fruits of the Kimberley. Now we are going to explore more of the Kimberley tomorrow, the amazing Berkeley River. We'll see what it's got to offer. Yep, stopped mm. in, saw the guys at the Berkeley River. That guy came out on his quad just yeah. to make sure we were all right, which was nice. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to see a human being, actually, after yeah. a couple of days being on the yeah, coastline. I haven't eh? seen anyone. <laughs> but yeah, mate, nice and calm in here. Look how wide this river is. Yeah, it's Peace, absolutely amazing. Peaceful sleep. Yeah, yep. Seen a couple of crops already. Yeah, they come, came in off the banks just before. And this is one of your GPS points you uh, gave me on your wish list. Yeah, mate. So, you know, we, we drove the Carson River 
Now we're seeing, this is probably one of the most spectacular rivers going around. So we're gonna have big walls. This is the amphitheater. Um, so we're gonna be surrounded by a big rock wall. Wow. You know, it's fairly short and narrow sort of area. And we're gonna see some great scenery. Yeah, sounds good, mate. We'll go and check this out and then afterwards you're up for a bit of fishing. Got a bit of fishing, we've got a few more things to see down the river, but yeah, yeah man, let's cruise. Alright, let's, let's, let's go find some crocs, <laughs> let's go find some big rock walls. See some sights, eh? The sonar is starting to light up, so yeah, Sonar's... we're definitely doing some fishing. Oh yeah, it's hard to drive past that actually. Turn in here. Turn in here, mate. <laughs> That's our turn. It's quite narrow, isn't it? Yeah, it narrows up considering the river we're in. Yeah. We just got to watch out. I don't know where that other boat went this morning, uh, that tourist boat. Yeah. They might yep. be down here. It's a pretty popular spot, I've heard. All two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the water just keeps dropping. Yeah, wow. Might even be worth having a fish here, Penzo. Yeah, it was. There was a big bait, little these big bait yeah. balls. No, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that is awesome. Yeah, dropping, dropping more in. Deep here, 14.4. It was three coming in, but now it's so deep here. Look at that. Wow. You right, Penzo? Yeah, mate. This section of the Kimberleys has not had the rainfall that they historically get up here. Who would normally measure their rainfall in metres, but unfortunately it just didn't happen. So it is so nice to see the water flowing here, to have it dropping down over different levels. It's absolutely sensational. And the opportunity to be able to motor straight up to it on the boat, it is very cool and very awe-inspiring. But I think we might even be able to get a little bit closer. Now this is what I envisioned exploring the Kimberley Coast to be like. As you might recall, Last season, Penny went over the Umbi track with Ronnie Morgan from Just Over the Hills Tag Along. On that journey, they cross over the Berkeley River. That's just up over here over my shoulder. It's about 1.2 k's away. So on our journey, we decided that we would see how close we could get. So we've come down all the way down the Berkeley River through massive cliffs, through some really amazing countryside. And this is about as far as we can get the boat. Now the boat's been nice and stable. We're in sort of deep water, can't really go any further. Penn's having a little snooze, so I thought I'd take advantage and see how far I could get down here. So here we are. I mean, the scenery is amazing, and we've just seen some amazing stuff. So about five years ago, I did the Umbi track with some friends. We sat up on the cliffs, not far from here. I've always wanted to explore this river, and now I had an opportunity. We're as far as we can go, but there's so much more to do. I'm gonna keep exploring. Okay. Alright, yep, no dramas, thanks for the update. How are we looking mate? Uh, not good, winds are picking up. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, that's what the weather report just came through it. Yeah, okay. It's a bit, a bit dicey out here in the Kimberleys. Yeah mate, oh, it can change. Well, we might get held up a few days or something. Mm. Uh, what are we allowed? We've got a fair bit of food, but... We're allowed some... four days, so... All right, you want some fresh fish? Yeah, mate. I know you don't eat fish, but I do love oh, the fish. I counted the steaks, so that's why I'm figuring <laughs> if I get you fish, I've got the steak. Yep, yeah, all right. Let's, so, go. let's go do some fishing. Find something on the sound, eh? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go. Yeah, if we head over there, mate, we'll uh, find that deep hole again. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we went over that before, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Rods are ready to go. <laughs> Let's go fishing. 
The weather plays a massive role in our plans to explore. So while we have an hour or two before it blows up again, the race is on to grab a feed as we might be stuck out here for longer than we planned. One of the bonuses of having a fridge on board is keeping your bait frozen and fresh, ready to go. All right, Benzo, we're here, mate. This looks like a good spot. Got a good feeling about this. Which is your weapon of choice up there, mate? I uh, need the rods. That middle one there is my favourite for bottom bashing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll hand you yours. Helps to have a guy like this around when you're vertically challenged. Cheers, mate. Coming down. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It is time to finally bait up. <laughs> Pretty keen to get this in the water. Nice fresh squid, Penzo. That'll do it nicely. The sounder has just lit up. Yeah. Have a look. You pick it? Oh, yeah. Can't get it on quick enough. Yeah, I was trying to beat you. <laughs> Race is on. Feeling lucky. Seven metres of water. It's not going to take me long to go down. I've got a decent sinker on there. Sorry, Pendo. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Already? That's awesome, mate. Oh. Oh, doesn't want to come up. Oh, oh yeah, they're shaking. Oh. I've got two. Awesome. We've got a gaff anywhere. Kind of busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I could try and flick him in. Bottom oh. and Golden Trevally boom. Oh. oh, you got two, that's crazy. Oh, oh mate, that's what mate. <laughs> <laughs> That was seriously like five seconds in the water. I'm that's glad I beat insane. You. Yeah, good job, mate. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's a really good recipe for these ads. Yep. It's called um, Nomnus. You can eat it raw because they're generally not a great table fish. Yep. But uh, yeah, eating raw, they're quite nice. But I don't know why I'm telling oh. a guy that doesn't like seafood. No. You're right. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to... <laughs> hey, it's Action Stations here at the moment. <sighs> there you go, mate. That was a crazy... <laughs> what? Like... It didn't even touch the seconds. bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you got two. Like, I knew you were oh, fighting it pretty mate. hard. I was going hard at it with just one. I thought they were going to pull me in. <laughs> right. Give us high fives. Back yeah. into it. Yeah, mate. Right, we'll You're taste... going to look after him or yeah, you Yeah, I'll take care of him. No, that's cool. You want him up there? Yeah, we'll put him up there. Thanks, mate. You just get back in the water. I'm going to. Yep. Wow. That's chopping out there. Just up in front of me is some tuna. The birds are working them. And we're going to go in and we're going to cast in and see if we can snag one. I've just got a purple lure on. That's just what's on there. So, yeah, if they're hungry enough, they'll take anything. Are you ready for this, Pinto? Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah, wow. Look at the bait. Look at the big bait ball. That's insane. All right, Pinto. Come on, come on. Okay. Is it a shark? Uh, flick me. Got it? Oh, no, still got it. Already flicked me for a sec. How you going, Ed? One of us is working hard. <laughs> I think it's him. Oh, look at that go. Some big sharks in there, Pinto. Right. He's not. He's just going around in circles here. Oh. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. <sighs> uh, <laughs> my hands on that. How's Look that, Benzo? That is amazing. Is that a bit of dinner for you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. You keeping him for dinner? Yeah, I think so. How they give you a workout, don't they? Oh, mate. <laughs> that was awesome. I um, when I saw the bait boy, I just like put this straight on. Put my gimbal on, locked in and ready to go. <laughs> I was going to have bruises up here and I don't care. <laughs> nah, nah, so much fun. Did you see the sharks? Huge. Did you see? Alongside the boat, I'm I trying know. to pull the fish in. This shark comes straight past me. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've got live, live bait on there, mate. <laughs> yep, yep, to your right. Oh, that's good. That's pretty epic. Tune in next week for part two of our Kimberley Coastal Run. 